there was a back and forth between Denny Burke, and I have no idea who Denny Burke is. He might be some big Eva guy for all I know. But this was an interesting um, observation that he had. I'll just read it. Evangelicals who deconstruct the Bible's teaching on homosexuality often adopt a new definition of marriage. I have noticed a pretty consistent progression among those who eventually embrace gay marriage. It goes something like this. Step one, oppose gay marriage. Every evangelical starts there, or at least they appear to start there. Step two, oppose taking a stand on the question. So this is kind of the micro steps of what happens. So you start off as a historic Christian and you're saying gay marriage goes against God's design. That's, that's the first position. But then somebody comes along and starts saying, you know, you really should stop damaging people by having this posture. So then you think, yeah, okay, maybe I don't want to damage people. So I'm just not going to talk about it publicly. So the first kind of micro shift is, oppose taking a stand on the question. And people in this stage, they're, they're, they're becoming an, aware of how offensive the traditional view on marriage is to those outside the church. So their initial remedy is to avoid that conflict by saying, this is an issue that Christians can disagree about. about. Let's not divide over it. So the first, the first posture is marriage is between a man and a woman. That's how God designed it. Gay marriage goes against God's design. Step two is, this is an agree to disagree issue. Uh, let's not divide between us about it. So I'm just not going to take a stand because I don't want to offend people. But this is, you know, kind of the migration that we see happen quite a lot. Many of you have probably seen people in your life that have gone through this migration. Step three is become gay marriage affirming, become gay affirming. At some point during the Christians can agree to disagree phase, um, these people start engaging in a revisionist project and begin reinterpreting the, the, the passages and basically to find a way around it. And so they begin to question the truthfulness of the Bible. And this, I think, is really what this woman's goal is with these pastors. When she gets them in the room by themselves, she's wanting them to micro step their way eventually to evolve and to progress their theology where they go from, from affirming you know, that God's design for marriage is a man and woman to eventually erode that, reinterpret the Bible and come to a place of um, re-imagining uh, the text so that they become uh, gay affirming. And um, they basically shift into a position of adopting a posture of they end up affirming what the Bible forbids. And then they go to step four, oftentimes, where they actually vilify people that are in phase one, people who affirm traditional marriage. And so then they will go on an active campaign um, to not only affirm gay marriage, but that they will also vilify those people who view traditional marriage, the biblical position of marriage between being between one man and one woman, as engaging in some sort of insidious discrimination against gay people. And they will adopt this, this kind of rhetoric um, that the traditional position is evil and harmful. And so that's kind of the, the steps of the evolution that the progressive wants, this, this gal that's progressive wants to lead people through. I think it's powerful to notice that that, oh, this, this, this is the big goal of, of where they want me to go. They at least want me to, they, but it starts so innocuous. It starts with this micro step of, of silence, this micro step of, I'm not going to speak out. And it eventually ends up being something where all, not only am I not gonna, just not gonna speak out, I am 
going to become affirming and eventually i might even adopt adopt a posture of vilifying the people in the traditional position mm -hmm.